there, this is Miss Pennycat, and I'm here to speak to you today about the poem War Photographer. War Photographer is by the poet Caroline Duffy, who is a Scottish poet. In 2009, she became the first woman to hold the post of Poet Laureate. War Photographer was published in 1985 as part of Duffy's collection, Standing Female Nude. So in the poem, we've got a war photographer in his dark room developing pictures that he's taken in a war zone across the world. So being back in England now in the poem, we see a big contrast between the safe and calm environment of England and his dark room compared to the war zones where he's been taking these photographs. In the poem, a photo begins to develop and the photographer remembers the death of a man that he took the photo of and the cries of his wife. In the final stanza, Caroline Duffy focuses on the people in England, such as ourselves, who may see these photographs in the Sunday papers. The speaker thinks about these photographs in the Sunday papers and wonders whether people really care about the people in the photos and the places where they were taken. So I'm just going to read the poem to you. War photographer. In his dark room, he is finally alone, with spools of suffering set out in ordered rows. The only light is red and softly glows, as though this were a church and he a priest preparing to intone a mass. Belfast, Beirut, Pompeii, all flesh is grass. He has a job to do. Solutions slop in trays beneath his hands, which did not tremble then, though seem to now. Rural England, home again to ordinary pain, which simple weather can dispel to fields which don't explode beneath the feet of running children in a nightmare heat. Something is happening. A stranger's features faintly start to twist before his eyes, a half-formed ghost. He remembers the cries of this man's wife, how he sought approval without words to do what someone must, and how the blood stained into foreign dust. A hundred agonies in black and white, from which his editor will pick out five or six for Sunday's supplement. The reader's eyeballs prick with tears between the bath and pre-lunch beers. From the aeroplane he stares impassively at where he earns his living and they do not care. So I'm just going to run through a couple of quotes that I think are quite important in this poem. So the first one is where Caroline Duffy uses this simile in the first stanza, as though this were a church and he a priest preparing to intone a mass. So the simile shows the seriousness of the war photographer's work and it also shows that it's a solemn act. It's almost like a funeral mass because as the war photographer is going through the process of developing the photos, it's sort of like a ceremony in a way, so maybe a funeral ceremony. And this is an example of religious imagery in the poem. In the first stanza, this could also be linked to the last short sentence at the end where it says, All flesh is grass. This is a quote from the Bible, Isaiah 46, which means that human life is temporary. So again, we've got another example of religious imagery in that first stanza. So then in the second stanza, we've got um, at the end of the stanza where it says, to fields which don't explode beneath the feet of running children in a nightmare heat. So this could be a reference to the Vietnam War, potentially. And this quote can link to the importance of the photographer's work again, as sometimes a photo is sometimes credited with helping to end a war. So if you think about the importance of photographs in daily life, sometimes photos can bring about a change. So if we think about what we've seen in maybe Syria recently, it's the idea that these photographs can be very important to bringing about some kind of political change. I also think what's important in this quote are the running children in the nightmare heat. If you think about what children typically um, sort of represent, this idea of innocence and, and youth, the fact that they've got um, caught up in a, in a nightmare heat and a, a war that wasn't their fault and that they can't escape, I think it's particularly effective there. The last quote I'm just going to mention, because... In the poem, it sort of changes quite significantly towards the end, where Carolyn Duffy refers to the Sunday supplement. So the sibilance and the plosive sounds in Sunday supplement make the reader almost spit the words out. 
So this might hint to the frustration that the photos aren't considered important enough to feature in a main newspaper. So if you think about newspapers that you read, potentially these stories about war zones might get skipped over or might not be given as enough importance as maybe they should do. So this is the Sunday supplement. I'm also going to link it to where it says, just after the Sunday supplement, it says the reader's eyeballs prick with tears between the bath and pre-lunch beers. So the sentence with tears between the bath and pre-lunch beers, you've got internal rhyme here of tears and beers. So this internal rhyme, I think, emphasises the short duration of the reader's pain. So we look at these photographs in the newspaper and we do feel sad for the people in the photos and we do feel pain, but then we quickly discard the newspapers. So I think it's showing or reflecting the shortness of our pain as a reader. Okay? Um, and then you can, you can kind of link it to the last sort of few words in the poem, really. It says, they do not care. And I think this is a really effective way of ending the poem because it's quite ambiguous and it refers again to the readers who look at the newspaper and don't care about the victims of the war or it could refer to the wider world really and how maybe we need to be more considerate of other people's suffering. So poems that you could link to, um, so you could link it to Remains, Bayonet Charge or Kamikaze in terms of contrasting experiences of conflict. So we've got in this poem somebody that has experienced the conflict and its effects, similar in Remains, Bayonet Charge and Kamikaze. Thank you for listening.